mate. Look at me. What is this? It's so unprofessional. Do you know what this needs? It needs a bit of a press. Uh, see what I did there? Ah, oh, funny, because I, I was talking about pressing in the last episode and how it's changed our fortunes. Honestly, it's made a massive difference. And sometimes I feel if we don't press, I go from looking a bit like this to looking like this. Absolute shambles. I like this angle. It's flattering. You can't see the belly jiggle. I love it. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 23 career mode here with Derby and we start off in January, yes it is here and it's gone off to an interesting start as we receive a bid from Toronto FC for our youngster Ian McNulty. Now Ian's a decent player but I don't really see him being a massive part of the squad going forward and not really something that I need in terms of another cam. So what I've decided to do is sell him for 2 million over to Toronto just to try and bolster some fees so we can try and get some bodies in during this window. That one body I'm really looking for is Calvin Ramsey from Liverpool. Um, mainly so I can move Tanganga to centre back alongside Jankovic. Mengi's done okay, but I do feel that Tanganga, as he grows, is maybe better suited to the centre-back role. So I try and obviously negotiate with Jurgen Klopp, and we come to an understanding for two and a half million pounds. But unfortunately, when it comes to the contract with Aaron, uh, Aaron crikey, with Calvin Ramsey, I don't have enough money with the bonuses that he wants. So unfortunately, we have to say no to the deal. I'm really gutted because I think he would have been a really decent addition down at right back, just to provide a little bit of competition and a little bit of cover. Nathan Ferguson at the moment is covering both wings, the left back and the right back um, and I think it'd be good to try and get some normal way of getting Tanganga back into the middle we still play the games through January as well I was going to do this live but I thought you know what it's going to be such a busy sort of period of time that what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just do a bit of a post con for it at least while we're in the championship until we get to the final stages or there are big games I'm going to try and do the majority of this all uh, via post and I hope that that is okay with you guys. When we get to the Premier League, every game will be live. We made a really decent start to the game, as you can tell there. We had two really, really decent efforts and should have scored. And, of course, the first shot that Birmingham have, they score. Jonathan Lecco, as usual, putting me to the sword. He's got an annoying habit of scoring against me on FIFA, and it's very, very irritating because he's not that good. <laughs> um, I've had him before in other games. Uh, some of you might remember I famously had him uh, during a Rangers stream on Football Manager a few years years ago and um, became a bit of a cult hero it's safe to say as uh, he was causing absolute carnage you can tell there nearly gets himself a second we were just not in it after they scored that goal we didn't really contribute anything to the game and if that goal's not offside then I don't know what is I don't know what the linesman's doing but I think it's Gary Gardner or is it Craig he, he just looks offside I know that obviously Mengi's dropping a bit deeper but I'm pretty certain that he is it was just a really, really bad performance all round, to be honest. I had an absolute shocker um, of a game. Um, we just weren't at it, weren't at it. Even in the second half, it takes us till the 79th minute just to have a shot on goal, and we completely fluff it, to be honest. The first half, we did really well for the first 20 minutes, but after that, Birmingham were just in control, and they just kept hitting me on the counter-attack. I couldn't deal with it. Lecco, again, causing problems, getting past Mengi. And it's a very, very decent finish into the far corner in the 89th minute to uh, just get a 3-0 win. I was absolutely gutted, to be fair. And you can look at the stats there. We kind of dominated it, but not really in relation to the goals. They had better, clearer chances, is what I'd say. And they took them. They were just a lot more clinical than we were. Uh, there was a bid from Girona for Blake Daniels, which I obviously said no to. He is our number one goalkeeper and will be going forward. Um... And hopefully he can put in a better performance today against Stoke because we needed it. Trust me. Uh, with the way that it's coming out at the moment, the playoffs are still really, really up for grabs. It, everyone is fighting everybody for those positions. I think now, without being a bit down in the dumps, I do think it's going to be maybe a bit too late for us to make a title chance or a title surge. But uh, you never know. We did it last year, but this year I think the quality of opposition is just a little bit too high. We do have Brenner, however, and obviously he hit the bar there in the first few minutes, which we were really unlucky not to score there with Louis Sibley either. Um, 
the pressing that we were talking about in the last game came into the fore in this. It was kind of non-existent, really, against Birmingham. It was for the first 20 minutes, and then it kind of fell apart a little bit. But this is some lovely play there. It's the old triangle um, of Sibley to Chimiti, back to Brenner, and Brenner gets yet another goal. Actually, it's Kavlech, I tell a lie, not Sibley. I thought, I thought it was Louis. But Kavlech seems to be getting a lot more kind of advanced so far, which I'm really enjoying. I have put a couple of instructions on for my midfield uh, two, not Njezovic, but for Bird and for um, for Kavlech to try and get a bit further forward, to get a bit of support up to the guys, so we can get a few more players in the box. We had a really good first half, Stoker barely done anything, to be honest, but, as usual, before the end of the half, it's a wonderful finish. It's an absolutely wonderful finish, and there's not really much I could kind of do about it. Maybe I could have defended it a little bit better and tried to cut off the passing lane, but just got a bit tighter to him. But when they finish like this, there there isn't much really that you can do other than sort of sit back and just just applaud. Really, it's it's a wonderful wonderful effort from Jacob Brown, uh, and that led us into one one at half time. A bit undeserved, I think it's safe to say. We were by far the better team really in the first half. We tried to really emphasise that in the second, as Bird and Sibley link up nicely there to Cadillac, who uh, hits it against the man. Sibley back to Cadillac again. He was getting very advanced during this game, and it's only a brilliant save to deny him a goal. From the resulting corner, a good ball comes in there, but we don't quite get to it. Bird on it here. His delivery has improved no end this year. Sibley then tries to test the goalkeeper and instead test the woodwork. It was just shaping up to be one of those days. But just before the hour mark, Brenner goes through on goal. He squares it over to Yusuf Chimiti. We get the man over. Bang. 2-1. Yusuf Chimiti and Brenner are brilliant. I love playing two up top this year. I would maybe try and be a little bit more... Um, defensive minded if maybe I, I obviously got another body in the midfield and gone 4 3 3 but I just can't not play with two strikers up front because it just makes us so much more potent uh, going forward. Cadillac, you have to say, had a brilliant game this year. Uh, this year <laughs> in this uh, this episode goes right through there. That's in Brenner and Brenner gets a shot saved by the goalkeeper. We were just all over them and the man in form, Jaffet Tanganga, gets yet another goal. As he heads in here, he's doing the Dybala celebration. I have no idea why, but it's a great header from him here. Uh, no idea what he's gone from scoring no goals to, I think that's three now? Three in his last five games or so? For a defender, that ain't bad. In the 76th minute there, uh, Jones, who I brought on uh, as a sub, he gets played through, and then it is 4-1. We really put Stokes to the sword in this. They actually played, I won't say better than Birmingham, but they were... A little bit more even. It's obviously the highlights package doesn't really show that because they didn't test the goalie as much. But honestly, I was amazed that we somehow managed to win this sort of uh, th this game because I thought really it was quite even. But then when Blake Daniels is doing stuff like that, it's even more of a surprise because I have no idea what the goalie's doing here. It's it's really poor, and this is why we are one of the worst defensive teams in the entire league. Uh, Tom Edwards there getting a consolation goal for a 4-2 win. Not too bad. Big news is that Borjan, who I only found out the other day, is actually playing in the World Cup for Canada. A uh, free transfer came in for him, and then we got two bids. One for Torre, which I accepted, and this is the big one. Max Bird, Club Bruges, who were interested in him before, have come back in and offered me 4.1 million. I said, no, 5 million will do. I didn't think they would take it, but they did. So Max Bird is on his way to Club Bruges. The club captain looks like he's about to be sold, and this could change the entire fate of the season and maybe the entire setup of the squad with the amount of money that we're going to get for him. But before that, we had a trip to the Den to take on Millwall. And I have to say, uh, this was another game which was very even, I think it's safe to say, but that's a brilliant goal from Jezevic, and I think that's actually his first for the club, it's a wonderful bending finish into the far corner, you can tell they're a lovely kind of like build up play, the pressing there does really well, we set him up, he just gets in front of his man, and even under pressure how he manages to bend that, it always looks better when it comes off the woodwork, doesn't it, let's be fair but you can tell there, he's under pressure and he just hits it, I thought it curved a bit, but actually, he hits it almost straight, with a little bit of outside swing, it's a brilliant finish um, and we took a kind of 1-0 lead, and I thought, oof, this is a good start. And then, as usual, we just can't... It's so easy to get through. I was a bit annoyed by this, though. You can see just the sheer amount of bounces there while I'm trying to clear the ball out. And it still falls back to a Millwall player. It's very frustrating when that happens, because you do feel like there is nothing I can do if the ball is always just going to fall back to the opposition player. 
what am I meant to do? Um, and I can't believe Brennan missed that. I can't believe Brennan missed that. It's such a simple chance by his stands. You can tell in the first half, we absolutely battered them, to be honest. And it's another brilliant save by their goalkeeper. I was beginning to get really, really pissed off <laughs> by what was going on. Um, and even Tanganga there makes the goalie make a brilliant save from the corner. It was just one of those games where I just thought, don't, don't do this, don't do this, come on. I've got a real issue this year. I've got some bogey teams. There are some teams that I just don't play very well against. Um, Millwall is one of them. Um, it, it's just really frustrating. Because I, I play well, but I don't get the result. And I think that's the most annoying thing. Because you just can't help but feel like, well, what am I meant to do? The whole idea really is that you're meant to be patient and then just sort of try and you know you, you will get your rewards but it doesn't happen we you could tell there a minute ago a bit of a goal mouth scramble from a corner and we get away with it that's the sort of thing that annoys me Shemiti's hit a brilliant finish there first time into the far corner not in a month of Sundays does a goalkeeper get to that but he did and then the second half was a little bit quieter but on the 83rd minute this happens. I cannot believe it. It's just the defending there. It's part ways and the way he's just dinked it over Daniels. He's already dived. It was infuriating. Fleming's a really good forward. Um, and he really put me to the sword today with two goals. And again, it's a case of maybe just not taking my chances. You can tell we had more than enough in this game to score. And I can understand what Brenner's trying to do there with the pass. But it just didn't quite work out. And it's yet another defeat. So the form has gone from being very, very good back to a little bit inconsistent. Here's the big one then. He makes his way out. Max Burr will be leaving Pride Park or has left Pride Park to go and play in the Champions League with Club Bruges. I felt that it was the only realistic thing to do. He's actually impressed me a lot more this year than he has previously. Um, I do want to keep some of the Derby boys, the original uh, group here, um, as we get hopefully to the Premier League. But I was absolutely gutted. The important thing though that is that that did give me around about £8 million to spend. So what I thought I would do is that I would go and try and spend it on a really good centre-back. And there's a player called Dardai down at Hertha Berlin who I put a bid in for. But um, and not quite. They said they would get back to me and there'll be more on that later. I pick up another midfielder here, Costa, who's 67 rated at 19 years old. Looks pretty decent. So he's coming in. But this is the big one then. To replace Max Bird, I've gone for Elliot Anderson from Newcastle. And I managed to get him on a quite cheap deal here for 2.8 million uh, when he's actually valued at four and a half. So I think we've made a pretty good bargain there. The wages are quite high, I think, at 20 and a half K um, is quite a lot of money for a guy that that's, is that, that level. But in all fairness, he's rated 74 and he's actually a couple of years younger than Max Bird. And he's a little bit more attacking. A bid came in for Greylinger. Uh, so we said yes to that. This is all on transfer deadline day, by the way. So this was a mental day. And here's the Dardai offer. So they, we originally offered five and a half million. They said, mm, we'll think about it. Then they wanted to add on a sell-on call. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to test the water. I'll add Raphael Charles to that because he's not really played. And then they said, okay, we'll take four and a half million and a sell-on clause of five. So I was just like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. And, and that's not including the exchange player. So we've got him on a real cut price deal here, which I didn't realise. He's seven and a half million pounds normally, and we got him for four point five. So I think that is wonderful management um, and a really, really good deal. And hopefully he'll form a really decent partnership uh, alongside Jankovic. They're both left-footed, which is going to be maybe a bit of an issue. Um, I've got a lot of left. I've got more left-footed players in my team than right-footed, which is pretty unusual. I think it's safe to say. After today's episode, then we've got 15 games to go. We're currently sat in fourth in the table. We're not far off of Burnley in second. We're only five points off them, but Forest are running away with it. They've got 15 points, so we somehow need to make up 15 points over 15 games against Forest. And with the way they're playing, I can't see that happening, especially with how inconsistent we are being at the moment. You can tell just how uh, tight it is for that playoff position. Hopefully, though, those signings will have made a difference. Uh, sorry I rushed through it a little bit, but it was a very, very busy day. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do drop a like, share, and subscribe. And until I see you again for another video, take care of yourselves, everyone, and stay cool. <laughs> Max Bird is gone.